What's up guys? Average Enthusiast back with another video for you. It's been a long time since I posted anything, but after this latest experiment, I had to put something together to show you guys the results. So I recently purchased a late 2018 3GHz i5 Mac Mini with a 256 gig SSD and 8 gigs of RAM from my home studio. After about two weeks, I ran out of storage space and started running into system errors in Logic Pro when working on my music. So I started to look at other options and didn't want to pay the premium of a MacBook Pro as I didn't need the portability and the built-in display and the Mac Pro is just way out of my budget. This led me to looking into building my own computer. I've never built one before and definitely never built a Hackintosh. But after a bit of research and approval from the better half to give it a shot, I decided to go for it. Can a $900 build your own Ryzen Hackintosh outperform a brand new $1,000 Mac Mini? Let's find out right now. The first thing I'm doing is running a Geekbench on the Mac Mini to see what results we get. Nine eighty six single core and forty two ninety four multi core. Here we can see the OS is running ten point one four Mojave. For the next test, I open the new Logic Benchmark Test Two. I put a link to that down in the description if you guys want to give this a shot yourself. I set the I/O buffer to thirty two and set the sample rate to ninety six kilohertz. I personally don't run my sessions at ninety six kilohertz, but for the test, I just run it to see what the possibilities are. We choose how many tracks we want to play and let it run. I start the first test with 20 tracks and get system overload almost instantly. I roll back to 15 and let it play through 8 bars. Makes it just fine. Then I tried 18 tracks. It makes it through and there are no audio artifacts or issues. Next I try 19. Nope. So the max for this test is 18 tracks at 96 kHz. Now I change the settings to what I run most of my sessions at. Still 32 buffers, but now 44.1 kilohertz. You can see here the session is set to 44.1. I run my first test at 46 tracks. No artifacts, sounds fine, good to go. Then 47. It's playing okay, but I'm getting artifacts. Not bad, but they're there. Now 48. Artifacts are considerably worse here, but we made it through. Next I try 50. It has really bad artifacts, definitely not going to use this here. And then yep, system overload. So our max tracks at 44.1 kHz is 46 without any audio issues. Now we're sitting on the Ryzen Hackintosh. I'm going to test the Geekbench first again. This machine has a Ryzen 5 3600 6 core processor, 512GB Sabrent Rocket NVMe SSD, and 32 gigs of RAM. And we get 1181 on single core and 6390 multi core. And here we can see that the OS is still 10.14 Mojave. But the OS thinks that this is an iMac Pro from 2017 with a 3.6GHz Intel i5. Nope. Now I go do the exact same logic test on the Hackintosh. Still running with an IO buffer of 32 and sample rate of 96 kilohertz. I start with 40 tracks. Sounds good, no audio issues. Then I try 43 and it fails. The audio sounded fine, but had the system overload. Next I try with 42. The audio still sounds fine and we make it through. So at 96 kilohertz on the Hackintosh, we can run 42 tracks compared to 18 on the Mac Mini. Okay, let's go back to 44.1 and try that. So I started at 70 tracks, it was fine. Moved to 80, still good. Moved to 90, fine. Then 95, then 100, still perfect. Still good at 105. And now at 110, I get system overload. So now I try 108. Still no issue with the audio, perfectly clear. And finally, I try 109. Audio is still perfect and it makes it through just fine. 
so the max amount of tracks I can run at 44.1 on the Hackintosh is 109. So let's just quickly look back at our results side by side. The Geekbench on the Mac Mini is 986 single core and 4294 multi-core, whereas the Hackintosh scores were 1181 single core and 6390 multi-core. On our Logic Pro test, the Mac Mini maxed out at 18 tracks at 96 kilohertz and 46 tracks at 44.1 kilohertz, whereas the Hackintosh maxed out at 42 tracks at 96 kilohertz and 109 tracks at 44.1 kilohertz. Like I said earlier, I was absolutely floored by these results and super happy that I decided to give this a go. At this point, I've run into very few issues on the machine as far as compatibility goes. Logic, Reason Suite 11, MPC Software 2.8, Final Cut Pro, all of these work amazingly, but I am at this point not able to get Pro Tools working. I tried the latest version my license covered, which was 2018.4, and it just hangs when I try to launch it. I also signed up for the free version of Pro Tools first, and it does the same thing, it just won't launch. So what I decided to do was just dual boot my Hackintosh. I installed Windows 10 on a different SSD than my Mac OS is on, and if I need to use Pro Tools, I just boot into Windows and use it there. I also ran into an issue when trying to use Parallels 15 to boot my Windows OS inside the Hackintosh. Parallel seems to run just fine, but as soon as I tell it to boot Windows, the entire computer completely locks up and it doesn't respond. I have to hard power cycle it to get it back. So for now, at least, I'm stuck running Pro Tools in Windows. Not the end of the world, and I think it's a very fair trade-off for all of the performance improvements I get for less money. Not to mention that in my case, I was able to install three extra SSDs and one three and a half inch hard drive. The other issue I have is that iMessage and FaceTime are still not working. I tried to get this fixed, but I couldn't. I don't use iMessage or FaceTime on this machine anyway, so I didn't bother with it anymore. And lastly, before I go, I want to express a huge bit of gratitude to Mike over on the Technola YouTube channel. His entire channel is dedicated to building PCs and making them into a Hackintosh. He's got tons of great content over there and personally helped me out on multiple occasions with questions I had about the process. I followed his build to the T and did not run into a single issue. So I just want to tell him I appreciate his help and think you guys should definitely go over there and check that out if you're thinking about building a Hackintosh of your own. I've left a link to his channel down in the description. And that's it for this one guys. Thanks for watching and of course if you like the video be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.